Hi everyone, this is Kristen from MissHauser.com and I am so super excited to be joined today by Amanda Meacham. Amanda is a, is a really, I think, some special experiences to share. She has just transitioned into her very first year as a coach after 20 years in the classroom as a high school math teacher and I know that she told me she's really kind of looking forward to share with, with you guys some of her experiences and tips and strategies for what she's learned as a brand new coach. So welcome, Amanda. Thank you, Kristen. It's so I'm so glad that you're here with us today. Glad to be here. Amanda, how about you just start by telling us a bit about yourself, your your background. I, you know, I shared a bit about you being a teacher before, but kind of how you got started with instructional coaching. What what made you want to take that jump after being in the classroom for so long? Okay, so, well, like you said, I spent 20 years in the high school classroom, and I taught everything from honors algebra 2 on down to whatever the most remedial level math class was at the time. Okay. And, you know, I have my master's in administration, and I had taken a break because I started a family, and so uh -huh. last year I decided I would go back. I had five more classes to go to get my, to be eligible to take that state license exam. So I... Started on the five courses, and I got two of them done, but this job came up. And I thought, you know, I knew I was ready for a change, and it really had never dawned on me to be an instructional coach. We only had two math coaches for four buildings, and I guess I thought they'd stay in that job forever. So yeah. uh, when it came open, I thought, I'm going to apply for this and interview, and sure enough, that's yeah. why I'm in this role today. So, Ooh. yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. So, I mean, I know that there's a lot of coaches um, who email me particularly who are just starting out and they're brand new and they feel like they're, you know, they're, they're, they're on, your, on their own. So I guess what has been your biggest challenge that you've, you've faced as a brand new coach and what strategies have you used to overcome that? Okay, so I think one of the biggest challenges is figuring out how to set my priorities. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because I'm accountable to so many people, there are so many priorities floating out there. Mm -hmm. And so trying to identify which ones should be priorities for my work has been a little bit of a challenge. So, yeah. you know, I work very closely with the other math coach and all the coaches for that matter, but I get a lot of support from the math coach because he is very well experienced. Great. So he can help me, uh, you know, sometimes he helps me figure out how to identify those priorities. Sometimes I just have to ask people, like, mm -hmm. you know, is this my responsibility too? Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes just asking myself, is it uh, important to the work that I'm doing? Is it in, mm -hmm. in line with the building improvement plan? Uh, just to help me figure out what should be my priorities. Yeah. So, so. You, you have a, a math coach that you, there's somebody that you work with. Yes, yeah, so building. we have two high schools in our district and two junior highs, and the other coach and I both have a junior high and the high school that the junior high feeds into, Okay. and so he's been doing it for quite a while, so he Great. is my go-to person whenever I'm really stumped on something and, and need some guidance, so he's been very good about that. And Like I said, the other coaches are great, and our yeah. curriculum, teaching and learning, uh, there are two women in that department that help us a lot, so... Um, I've got great people to go to if I have questions or need some help. So cool, because I know yeah. that lots of us, like myself included, are in, a, are in a building and it's just me, or I actually have one other coach who, who I work with, but we don't collaborate super regularly. Right. How do you collaborate with those other coaches in your building? How many are there? Do you guys get together every week? What's that look like? Okay, so um, there are... Okay, so we're all in a variety of buildings. So, like, our science coach is in all four buildings. Um, okay. I'm in two buildings. The other okay. math coach is on the other side of the district in the junior high and high school as well. Okay. And then we have some ELA coaches. So, I see some of them naturally just being in my own building, the, the other coaches that are there. Okay. The other math coach and I really have to work to get together. So, sometimes we do it through Google Hangout. Uh, sometimes we just have to carve out time to say, hey, we really need to meet up and talk about what's happening in our buildings and kind of make sure we're on the same page and plan, mm -hmm. um, you know, because we really are trying to do things similarly on both sides of our district. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have to carve out time for that. But in addition to that, every week we do have a coaches meeting for all of those secondary coaches. Ooh. 
Yeah, so that's really a nice chance to, uh, you know, if you're not aware of something, you kind of <clears throat> get filled in quickly uh, yeah. at the end of the week and, you know, kind of debrief about what's happened in the week. And generally, one of the two women that work in our teaching and learning department, they are there as well. So that's good for us to be able to check in with them. And we're very fortunate because once a month, we also have a trainer from the Educational Service Center come in and do some training with us. Cool. And a technology person from our district comes and does like a half day training once a month with us too. So that's been really helpful. That's great. So you receive professional development. Yes. Ooh. Yes, we do. Specifically around coaching, it sounds like. Right. We do. Yes. That's great. Yep. I don't know what I'd do without it since I haven't I gone through a coaching program. I think, you know, if I didn't have at least that, boy, I'd... I'd be pretty ill-equipped to do the job, I think. So yeah. that's been really, really helpful. And I, I love to hear that because I know, you know, some uh, you know people ask me all the time, where did you get your training from? How do you learn about being a coach? I want to be a coach, so what should I do? And for me, it can be kind of a struggle to answer that question because I didn't receive any formal training. Right. And I, I had a bit of professional development in my first year of coaching, but nothing since. So what I really do on my end is I just – you know, I, I read a lot of coaching books. I, you know, just kind of dive in there and learn through experience. But is there anything else that you do, Amanda, to support your, your professional growth and learning as a, a coach outside of that PD that's delivered once a month? Well, I think what you said was important about the professional readings. I am finding out that I need to do a lot more of that. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they have been really good about giving us some books. Um, like I said, the other math coach and I, <clears throat> we have intentions of doing a book study using the book that he used when he went through his program. Okay. That, I think, is going to be something I'm going to have to take on over the summer, you know, juggling a new job and my family. Yeah. Uh, going to push that back a little bit to yeah. summer. Um, so, you know, professional readings, I think, I, I really need to, um, you know, I want to do more of that because there's a lot to learn. There's a lot of information out there. I know. Keep, you know, browsing the Internet, coming across you has been a great resource. So Awesome. You know, all of those little things you find along the way when you're looking for something, you're like, oh, here's another resource I didn't know was out there. And, and it's just one more thing I can tap into yeah. uh, to try to learn something new. Great. And you mentioned a book. What is that book? Yeah, it was um, Agent, Agent of Change. Agents of Change. It's Agent. Lucy West. Ooh, and okay. It, and I think that was on the, um, um, the coaching model that Jim Knight. Okay. Yeah, because um, you learned through you went through Jim Knight too for some of your training. I, I did not, but oh, you did the, not. No, I did okay. not. But the the coach that the other math coach on the other side of the, the district they used that book through their official program. He uh, went through a program. It was like eight years ago. Okay. So um, he has uh, recommended that book to me, which I will take on this summer. I think. Okay. Well, I will be sure to put that in our show notes because I've never read Agents of Change. So. Yep. That, I got to add that one to my to my list for yes. sure. Yes. So I do want to um, get into kind of you mentioned Amanda like the juggling your family and your coaching, which I think I I do want to get into that. But I just wanted to back up and ask you a bit about your schedule as a coach. So what is your like a day in the life of Amanda look like? Okay. Well, I feel like even that has changed from the beginning of the school year. So. The beginning of the school year, I had great intentions of splitting my time 50-50 between the two buildings, yeah. not necessarily on a set schedule, like I'd always be at one building on Monday and always another one, you know, of the mm -hmm. Tuesday, but really deciding on a weekly basis where am I needed on what day, and then deciding on that day I'd stay at that particular building. Okay. Uh, however, I feel like now about three quarters of my time has is being spent at the junior high level because right now they have more needs as a whole. Okay. So a lot of my time is spent there. Um, so, you know, that's where I'm needed the most. That's where I go. And then yeah. when things are better under control and kind of heading in the right direction, I can certainly step back, reevaluate, and kind of reset those priorities again and trying to get, you know, get more contact with the other building, the staff at the other building. Great. That makes perfect sense. So it's yeah. really kind of a, a needs based. It sounds yes. like. Do yes. you do you work with a certain number of teachers or at a, through coaching cycles or is it just, hey, Amanda, can you help me out with this? Or how does how does that get set up at your school? Right. So um, sometimes I ask, uh, you know, we have a new curriculum framework. We're in the second year of that. So mm -hmm. I have, 
you know, some people who are interested in learning more and are trying to, you know, it's our second year, so we have a little bit under our belt, but okay. we're really trying to fine tune that. Mm -hmm. So I've tried to um, reach out to some of those people who might be interested in that work. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's just uh, brief coaching sessions, I'd say, like embedded, job embedded PD or resource training. Mm -hmm. uh, not resource gathering so much, but trying to help teachers use some of our new resources to collect, maybe analyze and organize data, um, you know, making sure that they're on track with their instructional practices. Mm -hmm. So, you know, nothing right now is super long term. Mm -hmm. There's I, really not the time for that right now, it seems like. But if someone had a need for it, I'd certainly find a way to make the time. Yeah. It's just that most things are lending themselves to a shorter bursts of time. Great. So, so you're doing some inviting of teachers to come work with you, right? So Certainly some teachers ask as well, but... That's great. It, 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 Amanda, as a, as a first-year coach, how have you found the process of building relationships and getting teachers to work with you? Has that been an easy process for you? Has that been challenging? Because I know that can be kind of sometimes a little sticky for coaches. Right. Well, okay, so the, the junior high and the high school that I'm in, the high school is the school that I taught in for the past 20 years. Oh, so I, okay. I already have a relationship with those people, although it's a different kind of relationship mm -hmm. now, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm really new to the junior high staff that I'm with. So okay. building relationships in the two buildings has been quite different. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a camaraderie that's already there in the high school because I taught there and know these people. Yeah. Which makes certainly makes a lot thing a lot of things more comfortable and easier to naturally unfold, but it also has its challenges too because of the existing comfort level. Right. Uh, right. You know, so that that can be a little bit of a challenge too. But the junior high, I'm getting to know new people and. Uh, you know, I, I love that experience of getting to know new people. It's it's exciting and it's scary and it's fun all at the same time. Uh -huh. And some of those relationships I'm finding take off much faster than others. Yeah. And I imagine that, you know, some of them will unfold over the years and some seem like they're, you know, have been there for quite a while already. So I take advantage of that as well. If someone's comfortable, you know, I'm right there. And if they're not ready yet, they're not ready. And that's okay, too. I love the way you put it, Amanda. Some of them take off a little faster than others, right? So that's like a really <laughs> positive yeah. way of looking at it. Like not everyone's going to be super psyched for some coaching, but they'll get there, right? And that's like a really good just, yes. just positive stance to take on it. And then I think as far as, you know, like I was a teacher at my school before I transitioned into coaching. And like you said, it was a different Teachers had to see me and kind of a little bit differently, I guess, because they used to get yes. some to see me as a peer, but now I was kind of more of a coach. So that's just right. takes a little while to get used to, too. Yes, it does. You're right. Yeah. Okay. So let's kind of talk about the juggling, the family, and the the coaching work and the schedule. You know, I'd love to know how you stay organized and manage your time as a coach, and if there's any tips or strategies you can share? Okay. Well, uh, first of all, I, my calendar is my best friend right now. Okay. <laughs> so okay. trying to organize being in all the different directions and all of the different meetings. Um, so, you know, I document everything. Okay. Uh, sometimes if I'm going to work and I have, you know, meetings throughout the day, I've got my timer set on my phone, you know, mm. with 15 minutes to go just to constantly remind me to check my calendar if I get engrossed in something. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I use my calendar, I document everything. You know, it's nice to be able to document a conversation because then it gives you, you know, an entry point the next time you check in with that teacher. Like, hey, last time we talked, we were talking about, you know, how to, you know, organize this lesson and you were going to try something the next day, and how did it go? You know, so just following up on the the notes that I take about these conversations. Yeah. Um, also, using Google Drive to okay. uh, create folders to, you know, organize all the work we're doing for, you know, teacher-based teams and such. Mm -hmm. um, we have, there are a lot of... Um, Oh, like uh, templates. Okay, so like an observation form. If I'm going to go into a classroom and, you know, do an observation, I like to give, you know, some sort of feedback. And so I had actually looked on the internet for observation forms and couldn't quite find anything that felt 
efficient enough for my eyes to use and yeah. to really scan through enough. So, you know, I took several forms and thought about what was important um, and tried to create my own observation form. And the other thing that I use that I think has been really helpful, um, our trainer from the Educational Service Center gave us a template and it's like a, a spreadsheet. It has all the teachers' names in it in the days of the week. And there's like a, a key at the bottom that has just like, you know, CI stands for checking in or, Ooh. you know, lesson planning. So LP. And so I just write on the day by the teacher's name what I've done with that teacher or if the whole day's been taken up by meetings, I write that too, because then I can reflect on a week like, feels like I didn't do much. Oh yeah, I was in five meetings that took yeah. all day. Or hey, I really got to everybody this week. And, you know, I have it documented as evidence of, you know, what I was able to do in that week. So that's really helped a lot too. Cool. Well, yeah. you are just so organized. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> are, you a, are you a paper or digital calendar gal, Amanda? You know, I've tried digital, but I am still functioning with paper. I love my Ooh, planner. I love to write it out. I love to cross stuff off. And uh, so that helps me. I've tried digital, and I'm just, my comfort level is not there yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't want to risk missing anything, so I'll stick with my paper version right now. I'm a paper gal, too. <laughs> but I kind of am a hybrid, like you said. Like, I'll use my paper calendar. I have it with me all the time. But I love Google Drive for just, yes. you know, like organizing. I have folders for each teacher I work with, and I document the same way as you as you described. That's helpful. Would you, your observation form, Amanda, it sounds like you kind of went through a, two, a few trial and errors in figuring out one that really worked for you. Is yes. that something you'd be willing to share with the Nassauzer community? Absolutely, yes. I will share that with you as well. Awesome. Thank you for that. Sure. Okay. Any other tools you couldn't live without in your kind of life as a coach? Um, well, I think just Google in general is great. Google. You know, hangouts when you can't meet up with someone or, you know, even oftentimes on a snow day, you know, it still allows you to do a little bit of work from home with that. But um, those are probably my favorite Go most useful tools right now. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. So... How, your first year coaching, Amanda, how has your principal supported you with this work, and how do you collaborate with your administrator? Okay, well, my principal, I feel like my um, accountability piece to the two principals is a little bit different in the two buildings. So, oh. um, my high school principal is new in her role as well, and so she and I are really getting to know each, even though I was at that building for 20 years, mm -hmm. she's new, so we're getting to know each other, and um, tapping into each other as a resource as well. So I don't feel like I get the time with her as often as I would like yet because she's so busy learning her job. But okay. we certainly tap into each other when we need each other. And I, I, you know, she shared with me some of her, her background and her experience. So I know that I can go to her for certain things, you know, get her take, you know, with her expertise mm -hmm. and she can help give me some input and feedback, um, you know, as I'm trying to shape up things for teacher-based teams or curriculum alignment. Mm -hmm. And then in our junior high, um, that's a smaller building, so it's easier to get with her. But with both principals, you know, they're invited uh, to meet with me when I meet with the department heads. Um, like I said, if there's anything big that's going to be um, rolled out or cause a significant change, uh, I always make sure that I inform them and ask them for their ideas before it's finalized. So trying to make sure that we're all touching base at some point about anything that's major. And because we're all pulled in so many directions right now, you know, if we have to let the little things go, that's okay. As long as we're getting uh, with each other for the big work, um, that seems to be working right now as we all ease into our roles. Great. So it sounds like, you know, I mean, yeah, everybody's busy. Everybody's got oblig obligations and appointments and commitments. So it, it sounds like you need to and have done a good job at just kind of taking some initiative too as a coach and not always you know waiting to get approval or see if something's okay but just recognizing when something needs attention and getting out there and and trying it would that be correct i think so yes yeah that's great okay so amanda something that i wanted to ask you that i didn't actually share that i was going to ask you uh -huh. but i just kind of am curious about this is there any, you know, ritual or routine that you use 
personally to kind of take care of yourself as a coach since coaching can be really stressful and go, go, go and in and out of lots of different situations. Is there anything that you do on a daily basis that kind of helps you stay stay grounded and sh- uh, not stress-free, but a little less stressed? <laughs> um, nothing, uh, no, nothing consistently yet. I'm okay. searching for that right now. So if yeah. anyone has ideas, I'd love to hear. But, um, you know, it does help every Friday to have those check-ins with the other coaches. That, yeah. that really does help a lot. As far as something every day, um, you know, I feel like the stress is up and down. Mm -hmm. And so right now, especially being new, Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure when the stress is really high. I'm not always sure how to manage that because Mm -hmm. everything, when you're feeling that way, everything feels so urgent. And it's like you can't work fast enough to help get the work done. And, you know, sometimes that means I'm coming home with things weighing heavy on my mind or, you know, working past the time I should be working, you know, be in bed instead. But, you know, I will eventually strike the right balance as far as that goes. But I haven't quite found it yet. I think that's okay. And I think, like, the the Friday check-in is a really important ritual. And even if, you know, you don't have a group of other colleagues or coaches to check in with, like I personally don't, I have a personal check-in on Friday afternoons, just kind of a, a weekly review to you know, reflect on my week and and see what went well, what didn't go well, and think about what I might want to change for the the following week. And and then I think maybe another thing, too, for me is, like you said, just the urgency of things and how things can pile up really quickly is just looking at, you know, at your calendar as far in advance as you can and saying, okay, what can I do now to make that crazy (laughs) time coming up a little less, a little less crazy. Well, and you know, I think when I was in the classroom, I was one of those teachers that I, if I, my students took a test, I wanted to try to get them graded as quickly as I could to get them back to the kids. Mm-hmm. So I found, you know, I, I knew what I needed to do and could organize that work and get everything done. And I had a routine. Yeah. So now I'm shifting. It's like, oh my goodness, some days there's so much work you can't get it done. And it feels unsettling to go to bed at night knowing you didn't get done what you really wanted to get done. There just weren't enough hours in the day. So, I um, I guess it's a juggling act. It totally is. As a teacher, it's like I had my set schedule and my set system and things (laughs) fit into nice little buckets. It was so comfortable. Yeah, it was great. But coaching (laughs) is a little bit bit different and and your schedule is not regular. It's not consistent and, you know, you just got to kind of make make the best of it each day with what comes up yes well amanda this was so much fun chatting with you i can't thank you too i can't thank you enough for spending some time with me today and i get to meet you and know that you're you know you're out there and part of this hauser community it's just so great so thank you so much thank you so much kristen i i really have enjoyed getting to meet you and i appreciate everything you put out there so thanks a lot for doing all that you do oh thank you All right, everyone. Well, thank you guys so much for joining Amanda and I for our chat today. For more interviews just like this one, make sure to check out the blog at mishauser.com and just search Interview with a Coach series and you'll, you'll find us there. Until next time, bye everyone.